Many people use Wikipedia as a jump-off point for their research, but even Wiki will tell you that not all of their entries are up to snuff. Enter the federal government. The National Archives recently teamed up with Wiki for an edit-a-thon. Edit sessions are not unique, but when the government is involved, I'm concerned that they may be redacting more than editing. We've seen the supposedly transparent, press-friendly Obama administration scheme to put government monitors in newsrooms. And if you call the FCC to ask about this, you get the runaround. David Knight with Free Speech Systems. I had some questions about the multi-market study of critical information needs. Uh, do you have a moment that I could ask you a couple questions? Uh, unfortunately, I'm not at liberty to answer any questions. You're certainly more than welcome to contact our Office of Media Relations, though. Oh, okay. You were listed on the FCC press release as the person to contact. Uh, yes, and with respect to uh, press inquiries, we're directing them now to our Office of Media Relations. And, and just one quick question. How come that changed? Uh, how, how come you decide not to field those questions anymore? Uh, because uh, we've just decided to route all of the media inquiries through that office uh, for uniformity of response. You have reached the Office of Media Relations. Please leave a message. I've reached Dan Margolis with the Office of Communications <laughs> Business Opportunities at the Federal Communications Commission. Hi, Mr. Margolis. This is David Knight with Free Speech Systems. I'm calling you because I just called that number you gave me for the Office of Media Relations. I've called them three times, and all I get is an answering machine, like I'm getting out your number. Thank you for calling the FCC's <laughs> Consumer Center. Sometimes agencies aren't that successful at stonewalling the press. It's come out that the CIA will now openly propagandize Americans. Very much illegal, but if you won't be held accountable, then why not? We've seen whistleblowers like Amber Lyons speak out about media censorship, but she's not the only one. And contributing to the growth of the alternative media, now we have this. Former CBS reporter agrees. Mainstream media manipulated, controlled by the establishment. And this is Ms. Cheryl Atkinson, who served as a correspondent with CNN. At my heart, I feel like I'm an investigative reporter, and that's what I can bring to the table and contribute. And quite frankly, in the last couple of years, there just wasn't the appetite for that kind of reporting. I'm seeking out now, which is sort of in flux, is the opportunity to bring underserved stories to a broad audience through an editorial process that doesn't censor, that doesn't try to direct a story to go in a certain unnatural direction, but lets the story be told the way the story naturally is occurring. But to the government's credit, they have promised to stop lying because of sites like Drudge Report. Yeah, right. We'll leave you with how the government-guided mainstream press keeps their narratives going. You can find more reports at Infowars.com. A lot of times people say, I heard something on CNN and then I read it again in Time Magazine. Well, you recognize Time Warner owns both CNN and Time Magazine. Or they'll say, you know, I heard it on Fox and then I read it in the Wall Street Journal. We well, can see Fox and Wall Street Journal both line up under the News Corporation and so on and so forth. You can do this all across the board. From the water table to our soils to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139.
Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics Advanced Media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gates, we have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888 253 3139. The Battle of Athens, Tennessee is not only a pristine example of the fight for democracy and freedom, but it's also an example of maybe why the government sees returning veterans as a threat. A town infested with corrupt cops turned politicians who were lining their pockets by doling out tickets was turned upside down by some 3,000 veterans returning from World War II. The self-described wild vets became the target of law enforcement who made a habit of picking up GIs and fining them heavily for just about anything. As election season approached, some of the returning veterans resolved to challenge the existing political monopoly by fielding their own nonpartisan candidates and working for a fraud-free election. The GI candidates promised an honest ballot count and reform of county government. But on election day, a town normally patrolled by just 15 deputies was swarmed with almost 200 armed deputies who turned up to patrol the precincts. Conflicts, of course, arose during polling, and a black man was shot in the back while trying to escape an officer assault. And when the polls closed, deputies seized the ballot boxes and took them to the jail. Opposition veterans responded by arming themselves and marching to the jail. In the end, the door of the jail was dynamited and breached. The barricaded deputies surrendered, and the ballot boxes were recovered. And the recouped ballots certified the election of the five GI Nonpartisan League candidates. Now, in the present day, not only do we face rampant election fraud, what with you know, e-voting and millions miraculously rising from the dead to cast their vote for President Obama. But the Battle of Athens also demonstrates how veterans are fearless. I mean, they've already stared right into the face of evil during battle, so they're not going to be afraid to stand up to tyranny when they return to the states. And this is what makes them enemy number one to a government that is hell-bent on totalitarianism. A controversial Department of Homeland Security assessment from 2009 lists returning veterans among terrorist risks to the U.S. A Morgan County, Indiana police sergeant recently admitted that the increasing militarization of domestic police departments is partly to deal with returning veterans who are now seen as a homegrown terror threat. Tanks, guns, armor, all tried and tested on the battlefield. Now some of it is here in central Indiana on our streets being used to keep us safe. Plus you have a lot of people that are coming out of the military that have the ability and the knowledge to, to build IEDs and, and to defeat law enforcement techniques. During the standoff between cattle rancher Cliven Bundy and the Bureau of Land Management, the majority of the militia that rallied to Bundy's side were veterans. And while the mainstream media tried to paint the militia as lawless and intimidating, residents of Nevada who witnessed the exchange expressed their support for the militia who did the job their sheriff failed to do. That is bull crap. Those are my children and this is my community. And if Metro does not have the guts to come out and protect us, what are you here for? What do we pay you guys for? And I want to tell every one of the militia, thank you, because not one of our government officials not one of our sheriffs or a metro would have saved us that day. They didn't save us that day. And the government's disdain for veterans is evident in the sorry state at Veterans Affairs. The Phoenix Health Care Center was busted, creating secret waiting lists that amounted to little more than death panels for 40 veterans. 
1,700 vets there were never even placed on a list at all, rather left to suffer indefinitely. And now 42 VA centers across the country are under investigation for possible abuse of scheduling practices, indicating the vast scope of contempt facing returning soldiers. So imagine the betrayal felt by veterans when they learned that the Obama administration had traded five top Taliban commanders in exchange for one army sergeant, considered by some to be a deserter, and whose attempted rescue on multiple occasions cost soldiers their lives. But rather than get caught up in the mass distraction that is this prisoner exchange, stay focused on the real issue. Our government wants to paint veterans as America's next terror threat. These are men and women who took an oath to protect the United States of America, even if it cost them their lives. Why are they the threat? Because they're threatening you or me? No. It's because veterans have been trained to take down America's enemies. And the shadow government that's now running this country is the real enemy number one. Veterans, your skills and knowledge will take down the shadow government, and they know it. But don't play directly into the government's hand by allowing yourselves to be manipulated into a self-fulfilling prophecy of extremism. Instead, soldier up for the info war. All right, folks, that's going to do it for tonight's broadcast. The InfoWars Nightly News will return, Lord willing, tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Time. That's Texas time. Until then, have a blessed evening. We'll see you back right here tomorrow. Good night. Celebrate the spirit of freedom and liberty upon which our nation was founded at InfoWarsShop.com. Molon Lave is ancient Greek for come and take it. This popular design combines both classic Greek Spartan imagery with modern M16 assault rifles. Now available in women's tees and proudly made in the USA. And now you can protect yourself from corrupt cops with the InfoWars dash cam. It's your car's black box that records all that the driver sees and hears. And introducing the Block It Pocket. It renders your phone undetectable while protecting your private data and your health. Or take back your privacy and protect your personal information by getting your very own detractor cell phone pouch. So get incredibly high quality freedom-based products and help fund the revolution at InfoWarsShop.com. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. Members can share their passcodes with up to 11 other people, and your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.